Virgo, what is going on with you? Come on in, have a seat, make yourself comfortable. My name's Alan Hill from UnknownTruthTarot.com. Welcome back to another Virgo love reading. Today we're going to take a look at the status of the love connection between you and your romantic person of interest here in May 2024. I'm going to do that by getting one card to represent the mutual point of interest between the two of you here in May. Then I'm going to get three cards for you, Virgo, three cards for your person. And then I'm going to clarify everything with a second deck, just to make sure we can get down to the bottom of the unknown truth about what's really going on in this love connection of yours. So let's get started. Let's get one card for what is the mutual point of interest between Virgo and their person of interest in May 2024. Okay, we're taking an extra one. No biggie. What's going on with you, Virgo? What's going on with Virgos as it relates to their romantic person of interest and the connection between the two of them? That's interesting. Not often that I catch it in midair like that. What's going on with your person, Virgo? What's going on with Virgo's romantic person of interest as it relates to Virgo and the connection between them in May 2024, please? Getting an extra card again. No worries. Uh oh Well, well, well. There's something going on here. On the bottom of the deck, the overall energy of this reading is the Seven of Cups. This is Scorpio energy of options and choices and confusion about the options and choices. There's a lot of cups here. There's a lot of different ways this situation could play itself out. There's a lot of emotions involved. And this usually represents having a lot of options and being confused about what to do and not wanting to make a mistake and pick the wrong thing here. Right behind that, I have the King of Swords. This is either Aquarius or Gemini energy. This is a decision-making energy. This is someone who's very smart and logical and rational and analytical. And when they make their decisions, they're usually emotionally detached when they do that. They don't consult their emotions. They don't consult their intuition. They look at the truth and the facts and the numbers and what's right in front of me and what can I see and verify with my own eyes. And I'm going to make the best, most logical most rational decision available based on what I can see in front of me. So a lot of times this can feel like a person who is uh, emotionally detached or emotionally distant or even cold and calculated at times. I have the nine of pentacles right behind that. This is Virgo energy. This is single energy. This is a step backwards from the ten of pentacles that we all want. The maximum stability, abundance, prosperity. The ten of pentacles is like the combining together of two people, building a life together, living together, being married, like combining lives together, building a life together. This is a step backwards from that. This is independent energy. This is single energy. This is like with you or without you. I can do this on my own. I don't need another person to physically or financially take care of me. I can do all that. Doesn't necessarily mean that you are single or that you want to be single. There's just that kind of an energy in the background here. And common sense, logic, and reason are talking about this idea of being single here with options and choices and confusion about that. I do have right behind that three of pentacles, which is Capricorn energy. This is supposed to be an energy of teamwork and collaboration and working together as equals to build something of value. Typically, what you would be building together here is laying the foundations for the ten of pentacles that combine together life. But on this particular deck, there's only one person on the card doing all the work by themselves. So this usually indicates that there's this idea of of being together and combining lives together and building something together. But one person is showing up doing all of the we and us stuff by themselves. There is that single energy right in front of it. Some what could be very cold, calculated, emotionless type of an energy here. And there's confusion possibly about that person. I'm wondering if this is describing your person or not. Hard to tell yet. This is like the overhead view of it, like the gist of what it looks like this reading is going to talk to me about. We might have to come back to that more as we go along. This mutual point of interest is shared energy that affects both of you in some way here in May 2024, Virgo. It doesn't always affect you both the same way. Sometimes they do this and you feel the consequences of it or vice versa. Sometimes they say or do something and it puts you in this state or vice versa. Sometimes it's external stuff that's affecting you both. 
But I got an extra card here. Normally I get one, I get two. The mutual point of interest for the two of you, Virgo, is the Eight of Wands and the Empress. The Eight of Wands is Sagittarius energy. This is the second fastest moving energy in the tarot deck. This is very fast forward movement or progress on something there's a lot of passion and desire for. This can be rapid back and forth passionate communications happening. This can sometimes indicate travel over distances or it can even just be a whole lot of external energy coming at you all at one time to the point that it could feel overwhelming like it's too much to process all at once. There's just too much happening. It can be that kind of an energy too. It's tied here with this Empress card, which is the mother of the tarot deck. She's perpetually pregnant, so she's always giving birth to something. So in a relationship reading, she represents the birth of something new, as in the birth of a new connection. Sometimes she can also represent the rebirth of a connection. But I've either got an overwhelming amount of stuff happening because someone has birthed something new and they have options and choices about the connection here, or we're having very fast forward movement toward birthing a new connection or rebirthing a connection. Not quite sure yet. This could go several different ways. So let me clarify this. Tell me about this Eight of Wands and Empress. Why is this the mutual point of interest between Virgo and the person? Thank you. Well, that's not looking pleasant. Come here. I don't read reversals, so you probably just saw me flip that card right side up because it came out reversed. It is giving me a little bit of a weird feeling, but normally if it's a card that I'm supposed to read to you reversed, it's almost like touching my tongue to a 9-volt battery. When I try to turn it upside down, it's like a jolt and didn't really get that. I just get a sense of something's funny with that energy here. Bottom of the deck. Two of Cups. This is Cancer Energy. This is a love connection between two people, an emotional connection. It's I breathe you in, you breathe me in. We're connected, but it's a two. And in tarot, twos are about choices and decisions. So this can indicate there is a choice to be made, a decision to be made about the connection between the two of you. It can sometimes represent the choice between two different people here. Like which cup do I want? I have the Four of Swords behind that. This is Libra energy of taking a pause, taking a break, taking a rest. This is about choosing to go inside yourself and calm your mind down. Fours are about stability and swords are about the thoughts and the mind. So this can be stabilizing the thoughts, stabilizing the mind, trying to calm your mind down so you can figure out what to do moving forward from here, figure out what choice to make here. This can sometimes indicate a break in the connection, as in like sometimes couples break up and they don't officially want to label it as we're broken up permanently. They call it like we're taking a break or we're on a timeout or something like that. It could be something like that going on. Whatever that pause that break represents, I have the Seven of Swords behind it. This is Aquarius energy. This is usually lying, cheating, deception, sneaking around behind someone's back trying to get away with something that they shouldn't be trying to get away with. That's not the only meaning of the card. Sometimes it can represent self-preservation, as in, like, I don't want to be hurt, which is why the dude on the card is stealing these five swords. He doesn't want the swords used against him. He doesn't want to be hurt. It can also represent leaving something behind because two swords are being left behind because he can't carry everything. So... It can be leaving something behind. I do have this beginning off with a decision card, and that Two of Swords can represent a decision that needs to be made, only it hasn't been made yet for some reason. Oh my this is looking like we got something going on in the background that maybe shouldn't be going on. I'm hoping that's not the case, but based on what I'm seeing out here, it certainly looks like that. When I clarify this Eight of Wands fast energy and this empress birthing something new i get the five of swords temperance the queen of pentacles the five of wands and the moon fives are conflict this can be a verbal conflict this is aquarius energy it can be a conflict in communicating like verbal conflict bitter words words like weapons a big fight a big argument this can also represent a betrayal 
It can represent a person who has this winning at all cost mentality. Like I'm going to get what I want. And if you happen to get hurt in that process, well, sorry about your luck because I'm doing what I want to do and I'm taking care of me. It can be an energy like that. At its core, this card represents a mentally and psychologically painful situation or event. Like I said, most of the time it represents betrayal. I have the birth of something new. I have options out here. I have someone being cold and calculated. Uh, taking care of myself while there's this idea of teamwork, but it's not really teamwork. It's one-sided. Choice between lovers. It's starting to look bad already. The temperance card is next. This is the Sagittarius Major Arcana card. This is a card of patience. It's a card of blending two things together and creating something new out of that. But it's about doing that little bits at a time, not dumping everything together all at once. It's about being willing to take a step back and look at the big picture of how is all this working out. And then coming back in and making some fine-tuning type adjustments to that. Trying to get it just right. This can sometimes be an energy of reconciliation. Because in tarot, water represents love and emotions. And here the love has been separated into two different cups. But this angel is recombining the love back together into one. So it can be reconciliation in that sense. We could be talking about things are moving really quickly here. And there's a lot of desire to move forward on rebirthing this connection maybe there has been a betrayal at some point and this could be trying to reconcile that trying to balance it back out and make it more mm, recalibrate it i guess is what i'm trying to say it could be that i have the queen of pentacles in the center of all of this this is capricorn energy this is typically like a wife type of an energy like that stable abundant nurturing person that I'm building my life around or that I'm building my life with. This will be like the centerpiece of the home and the family. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I have the king of pentacles out here in your person's energy. So these two people are typically the people that would represent husband and wife or very committed, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend type of an energy. People that live together, married, building a life together or around each other. Ah, this singles energy this three of pentacles like they would be doing the teamwork and the collaboration and working together as equals here but there's one person not showing up the same way is what it's looking like to me there could be an energy of like trying to balance this out tied to you trying to balance out this mentally and psychologically painful thing whether that was a betrayal or not i'm not sure it looks like it might be five of wands is next again another conflict card this is leo energy this is a conflict in desires like an internal conflict about what is it that i really want and this is like being torn being conflicted about what i want where a piece of me wants this and another piece of me wants that and i can't have both of them so now i'm playing tug of war in terms of what it is that i want i'm pulling myself in multiple different directions at the same time related to what i want now because this is in the shared energy this could indicate that your person is internally conflicted where a piece of them wants you and another piece of them is trying to move forward on something else, some other option that they have. This could indicate that you have an internal conflict about whether or not to rebirth this or whether this betrayal is too much to balance out, too much to process. It could be that. It could even represent that your person is pulling in one direction based on what they want and you're pulling in the opposite direction based on what you want. And instead of both of you pulling in the same direction together, you're kind of playing tug of war with each other. It could be that even. The final card here to clarify this is the moon. This is Pisces energy of fear, worry, and anxiety. Usually this is based on uncertainty. Like when the moon's out, it's dark outside. You can't see the full path in front of you. So it's easy to get turned around and feel lost and to not be sure, am I on the right path? Was this even the right path for me to begin with? Did I make a wrong turn? Should I turn around and go back? Like it, that level of uncertainty can cause fear, worry, and anxiety in a person. Now, another meaning to the moon is, again, when it's dark outside, you can't see everything. So this can indicate that there's information here that hasn't been revealed yet. There's something going on in the dark that hasn't been revealed. 
This can be something hidden in the dark or a secret being kept. Uh, not uncommon at this early stage of the reading that I don't have the full picture yet. I usually don't have that till we get a little bit farther. This will make more sense to me as I go through your energy, Virgo, because then I'll be able to see exactly how this relates to you. I'll come back to this again as I go through your person's energy, because then I'll be able to see how it relates to them. But that's the shared energy affecting you both in May. Your energy in this connection, Virgo, first card is the most important. You got the Four of Cups. Central to your energy is the Ten of Wands. And your final card is the Chariot. The Four of Cups is Cancer energy. This is an energy of not being fully emotionally happy and content with what I have right in front of me. So much so that I'm daydreaming about this other cup, this other thing that I believe is going to bring me my happiness and my fulfillment. Sometimes this can indicate that you're waiting on a love offer to come in from this person and it hasn't shown up yet. Sometimes this could be the love offer has come in already and you just haven't said yes or no yet and it's just kind of been left hanging here in the air. Sometimes this can be you contemplating making a love offer to them and you haven't yet for some reason. Maybe you're worried that you're going to get rejected. Maybe this there's too much here and you haven't decided what to do yet. It's interesting to notice that three cups are in front of the person and that's what they're not fully happy with. The three cups can represent being united and celebrating or even being reunited and celebrating. Or the three cups can represent a third party love triangle because there are three cups of love in the picture there. And it could be as simple as like, I, I can't believe you brought this other person in and now I can't get that person out of my head. That could be what I'm seeing with the betrayal, with the choice between lovers here. So hard to tell yet. So let me clarify that. Tell me more about the Four of Cups. Why is that the first card for Virgo in this connection for May 2024? I just had several cards flip up and show themselves and go back in. One of those was the Three of Cups. So it didn't come out. If the Three of Cups, meaning there's a third cup of love involved in this picture, it didn't come out. Not surprising. I have the moon here. That could mean that you don't see it yet. You don't know yet. Bottom of the deck, I have the six of cups. I'm sorry, neighbors are cutting the grass right now, so I'm not sure if you can hear that. I will try to edit that out, but if not, I'll, I'll do the best I can. But this six of cups on the bottom is Scorpio energy of the past. It's thinking about the past reminiscing about the past, thinking about the good old days and the way things used to be between the two of you. This is a deep emotional connection. Usually this indicates that there is a history between the two of you here. It can indicate something from the past making another lap through again. So whether that's an idea from the past you didn't act on coming back or some problem that happened in the past rearing its ugly head again. Sometimes this can represent a person from the past making a comeback. This could be that you're spending a lot of time because you're not happy with what you have right now, thinking about and reminiscing about the past and daydreaming about that. I have the Knight of Pentacles under that. This is the slowest knight in the deck. This is very slow, methodical, monotonous kind of an energy here. This is usually indicates that someone wants something like right now or maybe even I want it yesterday but I'm getting this snail's pace this very slow movement to where it almost feels like nothing's progressing nothing's happening it can also sometimes represent a person who knows what they're supposed to do but just doesn't do it for some reason he has the ace of pentacles in his hand the seed of abundance but the fields in the background are empty because he hasn't done what he knows he's supposed to he hasn't planted the seed yet he's still holding it and looking at it the opposite can also be true it can represent a person who knows what they're not supposed to do and does it anyway like he knows he's not supposed to just sit there staring at it but he's doing that anyway we got some element of the past that seems to be dragging on, that seems to not be making any progress. It could even be a case of you're, you're dwelling in the past, even though you know you're not supposed to be doing that. Could be that. It could be you're waiting on your person to like actually move and make progress here. And that's not happening very fast either. I have the devil right behind that. Capricorn's major arcana. I feel like I've said Capricorn quite a bit. Let's see what I've got out here. I've got some Sagittarius, I've got some Aquarius, Sagittarius, Capricorn. I saw some Capricorn in the story underlying this shared energy. 
We've got some Leo, some Pisces, some Cancer, some Scorpio, Sagittarius, Cancer, Virgo, or Taurus even, Scorpio again, Taurus, Capricorn again. You could be dealing with any of those signs. Or you could be literally dealing with any sign. This is a collective reading, so it's going to be almost impossible for me to pin down exactly who you are dealing with personally because I'm not tapping into your specific energy as an individual person the same way I would if I were doing a personal reading for you. Here I'm tapping into collective energy of probably tens of thousands of Virgo people. So it, I'm just going to continue to call these signs out as they stick out to me, just in case they mean anything to you. But this is Capricorn energy. This is an energy of control, but it's more about something else being in control and you not having control of it. Or it, maybe sometimes this is your person's baggage showing up over here because what, what's going on is affecting you. This is usually toxic energy. This is usually like obsession or addiction to something or a feeling of being trapped by something, feeling like I can't escape from it and it's got control of me. A lot of times this will be an element of a person's shadow. In other words, something about themselves that they don't like and they don't want you to see it. They don't want other people to see it. So they repress it and they push it down and hide it in the shadows of themselves, trying to pretend like it's not there, trying to ignore it and act like that's not a piece of me but it is. Usually when they do that, this will create like unconscious or subconscious routines and patterns that people run that bring pain into their life or into the lives of the people around them. And they're either unwilling to face it and deal with it or in complete denial about it being there. This could indicate that you're obsessively thinking about this other person and thinking about the past and thinking about the progress and how it's not going. You could be feeling trapped based on the history of this connection, feeling like you can't escape from it. Notice these are the people from the lover's card, but here they have chains around their neck and they're chained to this podium the devil sits on. And they've been in this, like they're not here because they want to be. They're here because they can't escape. And they've been in this toxic, distorted energy for so long that it's distorting who they are. They've grown horns and tails because it's changing them being in this, being connected like this. When I clarify this Four of Cups, I get the Seven of Wands, the Ace of Swords, and the Ten of Cups. The Seven of Wands is Leo energy. This is some defensive energy here. This is defending my position on something, defending my stance on something being willing to fight to defend or protect what it is that's important to me, what I believe in, what I desire. Sometimes this is being willing to fight for the connection. But notice this person is fighting off all this oncoming energy that's coming at them. I've got a lot of that oncoming energy out here in the shared energy tied to birthing something new or rebirthing something. The person in the car, though, is even wearing two different shoes because they got caught off guard. They weren't expecting this to happen, whatever this is. And now they're they're stuck defending something like abruptly. Sometimes this can just represent defensive energy. Like sometimes this will happen where I'm telling people the truth of what I see. And some people aren't interested in the truth. They're not interested in having clarity and insight so they can make the best, most logical, rational decisions, they want to hear what they want to hear. They have this preconceived, idealized fantasy in their mind, and they want to hear me validate that and tell them, yep, that's true, which is not something that I do. I'm not the dude who sugarcoats dog turds and tells you they're Snickers bars. I can't do that. It's my job to get you the clarity. It's my job to get the message for you and relay it to you exactly as I receive it so you have the insight and clarity you need to make the best decisions available in your own greatest good. Sometimes this will be defensive energy as in like I'm triggering the absolute hell out of somebody right now by telling them the truth of what's going on and they don't want that to be the truth so they get defensive and try to block things. I have the Ace of Swords next. That Take that piece how it resonates. I'm probably not talking directly to you, but I can almost guarantee there's somebody that's going to leave me some shitty comment down below because of what I'm, what I'm saying here is truthful and they don't want that to be truth. Ace of Swords is the sword of truth. It's the sword of victory. It's the sword of clarity. It's the sword you use 
to make a decision with. The, the Latin word that the word decision originates from literally translates into to cut off. So this is the sword you would use to cut off the other options. I see all these options here. I saw the two of cups as a, a choice between two people. This is the sword you would use to cut away all the options until there's only one left. And that is legitimately how you make a decision. This can be the sword you use to sever a relationship with someone. It can be the sword you use to cut away something that's not in balance. So balance gets restored and then what's supposed to happen can happen. Got some decision here and it looks like defensiveness either against the truth or defensiveness against cutting something off that probably needs cut off. I have the Ten of Cups here with it. This is Pisces energy. This is the happily ever after that we all want. That happy fairy tale ending, the happy fairy tale romance that we all want. This is most people's goal in terms of love and relationships. This is being combined together with another person and both of you pouring all of your emotions into each other and being fully happy and fully content and fully in love with each other. The negative piece of this card is like this card gets more people in trouble than just about any card in the tarot deck. And the reason for that is because we all want this idealized fairy tale romance thing so badly that we'll delude ourselves. We all want this and we all want to believe that the relationship that I'm in is this. It is my happily ever after. And it's the perfect true love that I've always wanted. We all want to believe that. And a lot of times, we'll delude ourselves. We'll ignore red flags. Because if those red flags are true, then this clearly can't be true. And I want this to be true. So I'm going to defend against the truth and choose not to see things that I don't want to see. <clears throat> Maybe the moon isn't necessarily something that you don't see. It's something that you don't want to see. And that could be the internal conflict here. But this, this is either the happily ever after or it's the opposite of that. I do have the devil here. Oh, shit. I have the devil. Time out. I have the devil and the wheel of fortune right back to back here. This is the karmic hamster wheel. This is a cycle of something that's repeating. There's a lesson that was supposed to be learned through this connection. Yes, you were probably supposed to meet this person. You were probably supposed to get involved with them. And doing that was supposed to cause you some pain that you would learn something from. And this indicates that I didn't learn the lesson. I still am stuck in this, and therefore I'm going to have to repeat the lesson again. Sometimes that lesson comes from the same person, and it's like they do you wrong, and instead of learning from that, you go around the block with them again, and they do you wrong again. And instead of learning from that and getting away from them and adjusting, you go around the block with them again, and they do you wrong again. Sometimes this is a case of like, okay, this person did me wrong, and even though I want to fight for this, they cut me off and left. And I'm still stuck with this idea that this is my happily ever after. And instead of learning the lesson from that, I get involved with the very next person who happens to be basically the same as this one. They just have a different package on on the outside wrapper. And now I'm going for the loop again and I'm repeating the same lesson again. This definitely indicates that there is a pattern of toxicity when I've got the Six of Cups as the top card in this underlying energy here. That This is a history of this type of painful, negative, toxic cycle happening over and over and over again. When I have the Devil here and the Ten of Cups, like this is an illusion. This is something that's masquerading as the thing that you want. And that's how it controls you. It's presenting itself so that you see this happily ever after this happy fairy tale love connection, my true love, when in reality, this is what you have. You just don't see it that way. You probably can't see it that way. This is the kind of energy that's good enough to trick you into believing that this is my true love, my happily ever after when it's not. 
it's probably not good enough to convince the people around you that actually love and care about you that this is your happily ever after. They can probably clearly see it, but this usually indicates that there's something about this that you don't see that you're in denial about. Now, granted, I will say this. This toxic stuff, this toxic cycle could totally be your person showing up over here causing you grief. But there, and I will say that because the devil is also out here in their energy. However, this is showing up in your energy, which tells me that there's some element of the truth about this connection that you don't see because you don't want to, and you're being defensive about it, possibly trying to defend the connection. And defend the importance of it. Defend the fact that it is your happily ever after when it's not. I, I hope to God I'm not triggering you because that is not my intention. I'm not trying to trigger anyone or hurt anybody's feel bads or anything like that. I'm simply doing my job, receiving the message that is supposed to come through, and I'm relaying it to you exactly as I get it. So please don't shoot the messenger. Central to your energy, Virgo, we have the Ten of Wands. This is Sagittarius energy of a heavy burden that's being carried. If you got that toxic devil energy and the repeating loop of that, uh, that's definitely a heavy burden to carry. This idea of not being happy without them and defending against it and trying to fight for the connection and defending against the truth of it, this could be also... A very heavy burden because it's going to cause you absolutely nothing but to remain stuck in a painful situation that you literally can't do anything about. So let me clarify this Ten of Wands. Why is the Ten of Wands here central to Virgo's energy in this connection? Thanks. And bottom of the deck, Ace of Cups. This is a new beginning in love and emotions. Now, it doesn't always represent brand new person, new beginning in love and emotions, although it totally can be. I do have the birth of something new here. I do have a betrayal here. This can also represent the filling the cup back up between the two of you and trying to like refill the love and start over from square one. In terms of love and emotions, you could be burdened by that. I do have temperance out here where the love has been separated into two cups, but the angel's recombining it back into one. So it could be a sense of that. And I'm, I'm getting screamed at about this queen of pentacles as soon as I touched it. Wow. Like I said, this is the wife energy. This is like half of the equation that builds that combined together life, building a life together. I've got the King of Pentacles out here in these clarifiers. I've got the King of Pentacles out here in your person's energy. That's the, the counterparts that build the Ten of Pentacles, the combined together life. I see a step backwards from that here. And this energy of building something together, only one of us is doing all the work by ourselves. There's some totally some internal conflict here and there's some element of something for yourself that it looks like you don't see yet there could possibly be an element of your person that you don't see yet yeah right under this ace of cups this either new beginning in love and emotions as a new person or refilling the cup with this person i've got the two of cups right behind it so we're escalating emotional energy here and that is also part of your burden. Eight of Swords. Yeah, it's because you're trying to escalate emotionally and it's not going that direction. It's not, it's weighed down. There's betrayal, there's internal conflict or even conflict between the two of you. There's an overwhelming amount of energy here and something that you have a lot of fear, worry and anxiety and uncertainty about and potentially stuff that you aren't seeing yet. Eight of Swords is next. This is Gemini energy of being stuck in your head about something, grinding over and over again on this repeating loop in your mind and feeling stuck and trapped and blocked because you don't know what the safe move to make is here. You don't know what to do. The person on the card is blindfolded and they're bound. They're tied up. They're constricted. They're same with the devil card. They're, they're chained around their neck. So there's 
an element of not being able to move correctly here and also an element of not seeing something or having gaps in my knowledge, gaps in the information and whatever it is. Like It would be like trying to read, let's say the government releases some documents about UFOs or something like that. You're going to read through that and there's going to be big black bold lines through covering up words so you can't see what that says right there. And that's kind of what this is feeling like. There's there's what you think is there, but then there's all these gaps in it and all these missing pieces where you can't actually see it. And the only way to like work through that is to simulate it in your mind and think through it all and try to fill in those blanks with answers that you're creating yourself and that not being satisfying to you. So then you go through it again and again and again, trying to figure out what to do and basically being stuck. But this is a self-imposed mental prison of your own thoughts. In other words, the way that you're thinking is what's keeping you trapped. You're not actually trapped. This lady, the, the binds aren't tight. She could just shimmy a little bit and slip these right off and take the blindfold off. And then she'd realize, oh, look, I'm not actually trapped after all. All the swords are behind me. I could just walk this way. No problem. I'm out. But she's not doing that for some reason. Yeah, and it escalates again. So I've got two escalating energies going from the one of cups to the two of cups. And now I'm going from the eight of swords to the nine of swords. So this is like escalating here mentally and psychologically. This is worse than the eight of swords. This is thinking about it over and over and over again where you can't shut your mind off about it. But thinking about it with so much fear and worry behind your thoughts that it causes stress. This is fear, worry, and anxiety. It's mental anguish. Two cards in the deck mean fear, worry, and anxiety. And both of them are out here. One's in the shared energy and one's here underlying your energy of this burden. Like notice the person on the card isn't blindfolded this time. But they're willingly covering their eyes with their hands because in their mind it's so bad they don't want to face it. They don't want to look at it. The Emperor. That's an energy of control too. There's two energies of control in the deck. The Emperor and the Devil. And I've seen both of them already affecting you. This is Aries Major Arcana energy. This is an energy of taking control, taking charge of a situation, putting together like the plan to get what I want executing the plan to get what I want. This is the person who calls all the shots. They make all the rules. They set the boundaries. They put the roadblocks in place. This is the person who is running things here. And this is definitely not you because the emperor is not going to be in this kind of a, a psychological state where they're just don't know what to do and they're constantly going in circles in their mind and having all this fear, worry, anxiety, and stress. The emperor does whatever the hell he wants and they make the rules here that that is very strongly feeling like your person is really in control and that's why you don't know everything and that's why you're worried here this is also looking a lot like i'm burdened by the fact that a new cup of love was brought in and now there's a choice about our connection and probably a choice about this other cup I'm really thinking that that is what is going on with this shared energy of this very fast movement on birthing something new. Probably came out of nowhere for you. Probably came out of left field. I think what you're not seeing is, yes, from your point of view, this probably everything was fine yesterday and suddenly today. What do you mean there's a new person? It seems fast like that. But I think the part that you're not seeing and yeah, the part that you're not seeing and the part that you're not seeing, part of it is because they were in control and they were hiding things from you and keeping secrets and keeping the plan that they had in the dark. And part of it is you just didn't want to see it. And I don't blame you for that. Who would want to see that going on? No one wants to think that their person's cheating on them or is planning on moving on with somebody else and not telling you. Like, no one wants that to happen. I certainly don't. So, I could totally get not wanting to see it. Another thing that this moon card can represent is your unconscious mind and your intuition. So even though you don't always see it factually in front of you, many times you're getting some feelings that something's, something's a little off here. When I clarify this Ten of Wands heavy burden that's weighing you down, I, get, I do want to say that this is a Ten, and in Tarot, Tens represent completions. 
So this is supposed to be the completion of that burden. In other words, you're at the spot here where you're supposed to lay this burden down and move on without it. People typically don't like to do that for some reason, though. When I clarify that Ten of Wands, I get the Hierophant, the King of Pentacles, Strength, and the Eight of Pentacles. Yeah. The Hierophant is the Taurus Major Arcana card. I'm getting ahead of myself again, but your person got two cards for their last card. And they're the Hierophant and the Devil, which I've already seen both of them in your energy now. This is a card of commitment. It's about being fully committed to something that's bigger than you. In a relationship, that's being fully committed to the relationship, trying to take it to the next level of, you know, living together, engagement, marriage, you know, like being in a fully committed relationship and being fully committed to it. That's part of the burden that you're facing here. So I'm not going to be the least bit surprised if you're married to this person. I got Queen of Pentacles, the wife energy here. I've got a mother energy here. I've got King of Pentacles in your person's energy and King of Pentacles as the next card. I don't have the Ten of Pentacles yet or the Four of Wands. Both of those cards could indicate that kind of an energy of being married or living together. But I got enough here that's making me lean that direction. Right beside this Hierophant card is that Seven of Wands, trying to fight for this commitment, trying to fight to protect this commitment or this marriage or however that is for you. If you're not married, you're fully committed to this person and it's you trying to defend that commitment. King of Pentacles, like I said, husband energy. I've got the king and the queen out here. This is probably you viewing them as husband type of an energy here. Again, with, with these two cards together, if you're not married to this person, you're very committed to them. And that in and of itself is part of what is burdening you. And to me, what that means is that this is probably not a person that you should be fully committed to, especially having seen the devil and the wheel of fortune together, the karmic hamster wheel you didn't learn the lesson you were supposed to learn. The lesson was not to dump everything you have into this person and be fully committed to them because that's why you're burdened. That wasn't what you were supposed to do. Strength is next. This is the Leo Major Arcana card. This tells me that you are going through a very difficult situation right now and it's probably taking every bit of internal strength you have to make it through this. You do have the internal strength to make it through it. Right now, you're just being forced to dig down deep inside yourself and find it and tap into it and actually use it. It's right beside this. It's connected to this person. And it's also connected to this happily ever after idea that you have. You're having a very hard time coping with the fact that this may not be exactly what you want to believe that it is i'm not what i'm not su i'm not suggesting that happily ever after isn't real or that true love isn't real or that you could be combined together with another person and both of you pour all of yourselves into each other and both of you be fully happy and fully in love i'm not saying that that's not real the concept of it is a hundred percent real this does exist in actual 3d reality it's just what you, this is your idealized view of the relationship. And your idealized view is not actually the real view. It's not, you're not seeing it clearly. And that's part of what you're struggling with. That's part of what you're burdened by. You're also burdened by this. This eight of pentacles is Virgo energy of work. This is putting in the work putting in the time, effort, and energy on something to get what you want, putting in the work on this connection, or at the least being willing to do that. And it feels like you have the willingness to do that, and you're having a very difficult time and burdened about putting in the work on this. I did see the emperor. That would be the person that's in control. I've seen all these choices here, and you wanting to go from by myself emotionally to together emotionally, but you're stuck in your head because it's not moving and you don't have all the answers. And this person is the one that's actually in control. Shit. Right behind that is the Empress again. The birth of something new. 
and notice it's behind the emperor. Look how big his throne is. You literally can't see any of the background behind him. And it's because what goes on behind him is none of your business. He's the boss. He's the one in control. He's making all the rules and he don't need to answer to you about what's behind him. What's behind him is the birth of something new. Now, by the way, I do not agree with that philosophy in a relationship. No one should be the full emperor in it. It should be equal give and take. And we obviously do not have that. So, but he's definitely hiding things behind your back. I shouldn't say he. This could totally be a woman. I'm just saying this person that you're involved with is the one in control. And you don't see everything that's going on. And there's other stuff that you actually do see. But you don't want that to be true. Final card in your energy, Virgo, is the Chariot. This is the Cancer Major Arcana card. This is the fastest moving energy in the deck. It's the only thing faster than this Eight of Wands that's out here. So again, I'm getting fast. Something happened very quickly, and you may not have seen it coming. This is either the fastest energy in the deck, or it's every bit as stuck as the Hanged Man, because there is an issue of alignment with this card, where if the driver isn't in full alignment if both parts of himself aren't pulling in the same direction this either doesn't move at all or worse yet when it does move it rips itself in two different directions at the same time and it tears itself in half as it tries to move forward but the on what this card is mainly about is the will to overcome obstacles the will to overcome challenges and problems and stuff that's in my way and like getting past all that crap through sheer will alone, and being able to move forward very fast in success and victory. Like I said, if there's a misalignment here, if you're pulling in one way and they're pulling in one way, which I definitely see out here in the shared energy, that pulling in two different directions, this ain't going to move. And if it does move, it's going to rip itself in halves. But this is indicating that you're burdened by the commitment to this connection and your want and your willingness to put in the work on it and it's still a difficult time and this is your underlying will to overcome the problems that are happening between the two of you but here's the thing it's like it doesn't feel like you are the one that creates the problems so how can you overcome the problem when you don't create it you see what i mean and it's and if you are creating a problem it's by not being willing to face what this actually is versus what you wish it was. There's two, Those are two different things. What I wish it was versus what it actually is. And if you doubt that those are two different things, how much money do you wish was in your bank account versus how much is actually in it right now? Probably two vastly different numbers, I would say. So let me clarify the chariot. Here. Why is the chariot... Final card for Virgo in this connection for May, please. Thank you. In Liberty. Bottom of the deck, Knight of Pentacles. So again, I'm clarifying what should be the fastest energy in the deck and underlying it, I'm getting that slow drip, the snail's pace. This is like progress that's happening so damn slow that nothing's really moving. This is also a person who knows what they're supposed to do, but doesn't do it. Or a person who knows what they're not supposed to do and does it anyway. This is really feeling like I'm not supposed to overcome this challenge. I'm not supposed to be able to get past the problem and move forward with this person. I'm not supposed to be in a commitment with them and put the work in on it. I'm not supposed to be defensive about this and fight to protect this idealized fantasy of what this is over the truth yet that's what it feels like i'm doing anyway this is like my desire is to move forward very fast on rebirthing this connection and take this this mentally and psychologically painful thing and balance it back out so it's all fine again and i can get back to being this wife committed together with them type of a person but there is an internal conflict about that because a piece of you knows that's not how it's supposed to go. And then there's the moon. Like There's stuff you don't see or stuff that you don't want to see. Yeah, and it, it's, because, it's because of the past. 
The Six of Cups is the card of the past. It's thinking about the past, reminiscing about the past, thinking about the good old days and the way things used to be. This is a deep emotional connection, but it indicates something from the past coming back up. Having seen the devil and the and the wheel of fortune, this is not the first time that shit has gone south with this person. This is not the first time that you've been hurt by this person. Or probably even not the first time that there's been secrets and stuff hidden from you with this person. But the, the history of the connection is what's causing you to do the opposite of what you know you should. Yeah, you have a history of having happiness tied here. This is the Leo Major Arcana card again, the happiest card in the deck. It's happiness, joy, bliss, harmony. Sometimes, I mean, you can't get a better card than that when that's what it means. Like, this would indicate that you view this person as, as your source of happiness. It would also indicate, like, if you look at the solar system, all the planets are in orbit around the sun. And why is that? Because the sun has the gravity. It's got massive gravity so much that we're all trapped in its orbit. And that could be another indicator here. I saw the devil... This could have so much pull to it that you feel like you can't escape it. The history of it, the depth of the connection, the happiness that you used to have tied to them. The other meaning to the sun, besides just happiness, is it's the card that comes after the moon in the sequence of the major arcana. So when the moon's out and it's dark outside and you can't see everything and there's shit hidden in the dark, well, the next step is the sun comes up and now it's not dark anymore. And all the stuff that's been hiding in the dark, all the secrets get exposed and you can see it for what it is then. What's getting exposed is the Queen of Wands. This is either Leo or Aries energy. Sometimes it could be Sagittarius if it's talking about a person's sign. If it's not talking about their sign, this is the hottest queen in the deck. So this is someone who is very bold and passionate, and fiery and sexy and vivacious and fun to be around and the life of the party. And there's a lot of sexual attraction and desire aimed at this person here. I typically get this when there's another person that isn't you in this connection. And that would be them. The lovers. The Gemini Major Arcana card. For you, this means it's a powerful love connection in terms of the way you feel about it. But this card before it was called the lovers used to be called the choice because this is about the interconnectedness of people. When you're in a relationship with somebody, your decisions and choices affect them and theirs affect you as well. There's no escape in that. It's not just in individual relationships. It's humanity as a whole. Like we can't pollute the environment without that affecting everybody. We can't start slinging nuclear bombs back and forth and not affect everybody. So this is the interconnectedness of people, but it also can indicate a choice about this love connection or a choice between two lovers. I've had that feeling several times with the overall energy being options and choices and confusion about that. And we got this cold, calculated, emotionless energy that seems to be in control of the options and choices. And maybe them even presenting themselves as being single in the physical world when they're not. But definitely an energy here of you doing all the work for the us crap all by yourself. Like us is supposed to be teamwork. Like we should be building this, not you building this for us. Like that doesn't make sense. That doesn't work. It never works, it never has worked, and it's never going to. When I clarify the chariot, I get justice, the ace of pentacles, and the two of swords. Justice is the most powerful card of balance in the deck. It's the Libra Major Arcana card. This is about doing the right, fair, just thing. The sword in this card is this ace of swords that you had in your first column. It's the sword of truth. It's the sword you use to cut away something that's not in balance. So balance can be restored and then the right, fair, just thing can happen. In other words, what's supposed to happen can happen, but this indicates that something unfair and unjust has occurred and this is the need to correct it or something unbalanced is going on and this is the need to correct it. If there's this idea of getting past the problems and challenges, it's about cutting away the thing 
that is causing the problem. It's laying right beside the commitment that you have to them and your willingness to defend it and fight for it. That is part of the problem. Because that's not what you're supposed to be doing with this particular person. Ace of Pentacles is next. This is a physical, tangible, new opportunity presenting itself in the physical world. This is not an idea or a concept or a belief. This is a physical, I can touch it thing. And that is one of the unfair, unjust things happening. This has got two layers to it. There is a physical opportunity being presented and there is unfairness unjustness, unbalanced, tied to this. That opportunity is laying right beside your person. They have the opportunity here. You're looking for an opportunity to correct this, to balance it out, to move forward past it successfully. And their opportunity is what is leading to a severing between the two of you. The, the king, which the king of pentacles, which so far has represented your person, is surrounded by aces opportunities and the card that comes next in here the way it's laid in the column the other meaning to strength is that it's a person who's trying to tame this beast inside themselves they're trying to rein themselves in and hold themselves back and not do something that would be some kind of a mistake they're struggling against an internal urge or a drive that they have and they're not able to hold it back long enough like the lady can only hold this lion back as long as the lion chooses to be cool with her and stay here. If it wants to leave, what can she do? Nothing. If she tries to stop it, it will maul her. So mm, that's someone who's struggling against a piece of themselves. So think about like when, a, let's say someone who has a drug addiction decides this morning that, okay, well, I don't want to do drugs anymore, so I'm just going to quit. But then by the late afternoon, they're starting to eke out for it and they, they want it. And now they're struggling against them. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. By later in the evening, it's gotten really bad and it's not going to take long until they crack. And next thing you know, they're doing it again. And that's what I'm really feeling off of this. Your person had a physical opportunity and they couldn't stop. Two of swords. Libra energy, twos are choices, they're decisions. This is a decision that needs to be made, only it hasn't been made yet. The person on the card is trying to decide between these two swords, but they're blindfolded, so they can't see what they're doing, and they can't decide because of that. Sometimes the blindfold means I don't have enough information available to me to make the decision, and that's why it's not being made. I did see the emperor, the person who's in control and in charge. <laughs> It looks like your person has the opportunity present itself. Well, this could mean that it's not even your decision. You're, you're waiting here. It looks like not satisfied because you're not together. You're waiting on reconciliation to come in and it's not happening. And you're burdened by that. This could mean it's not even your decision. It's their decision. But that blindfold can also represent the blinders that a person wears when there's something they don't want to see. There's something they don't want to look at. There's something that they don't want to be factually true. So they ignore it and they, they get in denial about it. And being in denial about it and refusing to look at it prevents the correct decision from being made. And that's why you're having such a struggle with this yourself and why you're being forced to go through this difficult situation where you have to dig down inside yourself to find the strength to make it through it because you have a decision that you have to make that you don't want to make what you want is the opportunity to balance this out but that's not the decision you're supposed to be making you're you're not seeing the fact that this isn't actually the ten of cups with them it's an illusion it's a mirage it's an idealized view of what you wish it was and you're refusing to look at how it actually is because how it actually is is your person having physical opportunities that they take advantage of that aren't fair and just and what's supposed to be going on and it looks like even that opportunity gets acted on very very quickly uh, i feel like i've probably triggered the absolute hell out of you while I'm telling you all of this, but like I said, it's not my job to try to figure out what I think you want to hear 
and then twist the meanings of everything that I'm receiving to make it fit what you want to hear. It's my job to get you the message and relay it to you truthfully so that you have the information and you can make the best decisions available for yourself and your own greatest good based on that. It's really, really impossible to make the best decisions for yourself when you stay blindfolded and don't don't face something, refuse to look at it or turn a blind eye to it. It's almost impossible to do that. That's your energy in this connection. Let's take a look at your person's energy. For them, the first card is the most important. We got the King of Pentacles. Central to their energy is the Five of Cups. And their final card here came out as two. We got the Hierophant and the Devil. King of Pentacles. We've already seen it here. Center in your energy right here. Actually, these two cards would probably be... No, I guess this is the center. Probably how you're viewing them. This, like I said, is either Taurus or Virgo energy. This is husband type energy. Person that's building their life with me. I'm building a life together with them. It's that kind of an energy. It can sometimes represent a person who is a business owner or runs a business or is an independent contractor, freelancer, someone who's good at building things, whether that's physically building things or building like financial empires. It could be somebody who's a manager or has like a an authority position where they work. Usually it's someone who has their money and their assets and physical resources pretty well established. Tell me about King of Pentacles. Why is the King of Pentacles the first card? For Virgo's romantic person of interest in May, please. Okay, hey, come here. Jeez, jeez, jeez. Wait. I'm not I'm not liking this person's energy. Bottom of the deck. Nine of swords. Gemini energy. We've seen this in your side. Fear, worry, and anxiety. Thinking about something with so much fear and worry behind their thoughts, it becomes physically stressful. It starts to manifest itself as stress in the body, sleepless nights, nightmares, can't concentrate, can't shut my mind off. I get this a lot when someone has birthed something new outside of the connection and they're afraid that that's going to come out. They've got a secret that's being kept and they're afraid the secret is going to be exposed. It looks to me like they have betrayed you already. By blending themselves together with someone else that's not you. When they are either married to you or in a full on commitment with you. And there's probably an internal conflict with them too about keeping the secret. And whether they should or shouldn't do that. <sighs> they could also even be pulling themselves in many different directions. I do have options and choices here. It could be more than one person that they've had. A, a new beginning with here and maybe they're torn between part of them still wants you and part of them wants this new thing or maybe there's multiple new things it's hard to tell yet but there's definitely fear worry anxiety and stress for them yeah they're worried about the the connection coming out they're they're worried about the other cup and the choice between two people coming out eight of swords Right between those two mentally, psychologically not pleasant energies is the other connection here. There's something that they're waiting on in the background, this Aries energy. This is this is the three of wands. It's the card that comes after the two, which is the fork in the road, the decision point about what is it I want for my life? What do I want my world to be like and which path? Do I choose to get me there and which path do I leave behind? That's the choice point. This is the next step where the choice has already been made. They've chosen the path. They know what they want. They're taking steps down the path to get what they want already. They just, and they fully believe the thing they want is going to happen. It just hasn't happened yet for some reason. And they're waiting on that to materialize in the physical reality. So sometimes this could mean I have a choice to make between two cups and I'm not fully sure what to do I can't see everything I got a lot of stress about it so I'm just gonna wait to make my decision 
I do see over here in your energy a decision that needs made that doesn't get made about some physical opportunity. This could easily be a case where they have a new person now and they have to choose between you and this new person and it's stressful and instead of choosing between the two of you, I'm just going to decide not to choose and uh, mm, that's how betrayal happens. Mm -hmm. That's how a new cup gets brought in. That's how I've birthed a new connection when I'm still with someone. And that's what requires a secret to be kept. I'm not feeling this person, man. I'm not feeling this person. When I clarify King of Pentacles, I get the Virgo Major Arcana card, the Hermit. Another Major Arcana, the Tower. The Page of Cups. And another Major Arcana, the Hanged Man. So I got a lot of powerful energy here. I've got two major arcana in the clarifiers of the shared energy, one in the, the actual shared energy. Got a lot of major arcana, two more in their final cards. So a lot of powerful energy around this person affecting this person. The Virgo major arcana card, the Hermit, is a card of withdrawal and isolation. I get this when communication shuts down and they're not talking to you anymore. I get this when they ghost you, especially when I've got this very fast movement toward the birth of something new. Like, I'm, boop, I'm out, see ya. I got the chariot here for you. Very fast energy. This could totally be a case of I just shut down and quit talking to you and went on and did my own thing here. This is supposed to be a card about being forced inside themselves to do soul searching and deep inner reflection and deep contemplation and looking in the shadows of themselves trying to find those devil type energies that we all have inside of us this is part of being human we all have that shadow element to us we all have things about ourselves we don't like this is about having the courage to shine that inner light down inside yourself and look for that stuff so you can face it, so you can address it and deal with it. And it's about what, what adjustments do I need to make to me so that I can move forward the way I want to. But something tells me that isn't what they're doing. This is just to me representing silence. I'm not talking, probably ghosted you. At the very least, I had stuff going on with fast movement on something and options that I didn't tell you about. The tower. This is the collapse of some important structure in their life. And probably your life too. This can oftentimes represents the collapse of the relationship or the collapse of a belief system that they were operating from. This is usually everything goes to hell in a handbasket. Foundation rocking event. After this moment, nothing is the same ever again. <sighs> the Page of Cups is news and messages and communications about love and emotions. Lovey-dovey messages, flirtatious behavior, being at the stage of expressing feelings, in early stages of a love offer, early stages of a love connection. It is a page, and pages are the lowest form of the court card. It goes page, knight, queen, king. So this is the least developed of the court card energies. So it usually represents a person who's not fully developed in whatever area the card is in. And in this case, it's emotions. So it's not fully emotionally developed, not fully emotionally mature. The person has a cup with a fish in it. And that can represent sleight of hand. That can represent I'm not emotionally mature enough to handle the weight of your gaze into my eyes because I'll give something away I don't want to give away. So I'm like, hey, look look at this cool little fish in the cup here so you don't look at me so I can try and slide something past you. Something that's devastating. Something that I'm not talking about. And I see King of Pentacles, and in your energy, King of Pentacles is tied to receiving a new physical opportunity, and King of Pentacles is tied to the sword of that you make decisions with. The sword you cut something away with us. It's also the sword of truth. And if it's truth, they're not speaking the truth here. Yeah. Instead, we got the hanged man, which is an energy of progress being halted. No forward movement happening. Things are stuck. They're at a dead stop, dead standstill. Nothing's moving here. This is an energy of someone who is 
they're hanging upside down because they're trying to look at things from a different perspective than they normally would, a different point of view than they normally would. And they're doing that, trying to figure out what has me stuck, why am I stuck, how do I get myself unstuck so I can move forward. These are two very, very similar energies. They're both major arcana cards. At their core, they're both about trying to figure out what do I do in order to move forward from here. The difference is in where the focus is placed. Here, the focus is directed internally. I'm looking at myself for what do I need to adjust about me so I can move forward. But that ain't what your person's doing. They're looking externally to themselves. It's not, they're looking at things from a different perspective, not me from a different perspective. They're looking at what out here has me stuck. What's the problem and the problem is external to them. It's not internal to them. In fact, that is actually not accurate whatsoever. The problem is 100% internal to them. But this is playing the blame game. This is being the helpless victim. And it's not my fault that this has fallen apart. It's your fault that this has fallen apart. If you wouldn't have done this or said that or treated me this way, then I wouldn't have done what I did. So it's all your fault. This is like helpless victim victim mentality blame game and it's coming from a state of emotional immaturity and because the devil is here they got some baggage that they haven't dealt with and they don't want to see that they're blaming i get this even when somebody's got the devil sure this sometimes is an energy that comes when someone has been hurt by something in the past and they didn't properly address it and they didn't heal they just pushed it down and pretended like I'm fine that didn't even happen I'm just going to continue right on like it didn't happen but it did happen and they did get hurt and there was some a message that pain was trying to deliver them and they ignored it they pushed that piece of themselves into the shadow and said you're not important I don't need to hear what you have to say but they did need to hear that and this is not going to be just pushed aside and shut up what's that some some movie just popped into my head like nobody puts baby in the corner that's exactly how that piece of your unconscious mind reacts to that and it's like oh yeah dude well now i'm going to do unconscious stuff to control you and make you do stuff that's painful because then you're going to listen to the pain eventually but we've already seen the the wheel of fortune with that devil card the karmic hamster wheel where they don't learn the lesson they're they're still blaming this on something that happened to them whether mommy didn't treat me right as a kid or daddy left when I was a kid or my very first girlfriend kissed my best friend and broke up with me whatever their bullshit story is it's a bullshit story that they're blaming things on central to their energy is the five of cups this is Scorpio energy again with the conflict I've got two conflicts out here in the shared energy and now I've got another one here affecting them this is sadness and remorse about the past. This is being focused on these three cups that have been spilled and all the love and emotions that have been spilled and wasted. All the time, effort, and energy that's been spilled and wasted. There are two upright cups in the background, though. And that could represent that this person still feels a connection to you, but they're not focused on that right now. They're focused on three cups, not two. It could even represent that they have a two of cups in the background, which can represent a choice between two people. And that's why everything's all messed up right now. But this would indicate like sadness, remorse, guilt, regrets, or feeling sorry for myself. One of those three things, or maybe I said more than three. I don't know. Tell me about this five of cups, please. Why is this central for Virgo's person's energy? Yeah, see, they got a lot going on. Look at all the cards, like, trying to get away from me all at once. It's like I'm trying to lose everything all at once. Let's get one more here, please. One more for this five of cups. When is that central to their energy? Okay, we'll take three extra. Bottom of the deck. Four of Cups. That's the very first card that came out in your energy. I'm not fully happy. It's Cancer energy, by the way. I'm not fully happy. I'm not fully content with what I have in front of me. So much so that I'm daydreaming about this other cup. This other thing that I think my happiness is going to come to me from. 
they have sadness and remorse. Like I get this sometimes when they're they're waiting on this other thing to come in and I'm not happy because I'm united with you and I can't have this other thing. Man, Sometimes this is also the energy of a person who's never happy with what they have in front of them. There's always this other bright, shiny object that they think is going to make them happy. And then they're not happy until they get it. But then when they get that, it's cool for about 10 minutes. And then I'm not happy with that anymore either. And now there's another new thing that I want. Four of Wands. So I've got two fours in a row. This is Aries energy. This is stability of the home and the family, stability of the connection between the two of you. The four wands represent 1111, which is the number of manifesting. We've seen the three of wands for them, where they fully believe this thing they want is going to happen. And they've already started taking actions to get the thing. They just don't have it yet. And they're waiting on it to materialize. Well, this is it materializing. It's stable in the physical 3D reality. I've got that Ace of Pentacles here. That opportunity that presents itself to the King of Pentacles. The first card, King of Pentacles. The thing that they want that is going to, that they think will make them happy is already here. Nine of Swords. Yeah, and... Dude, this is really feeling like mental anguish because yes, it's here, but I'm I'm already in something now. And it doesn't stop them. It certainly doesn't stop them. Yeah, two of cups. And they're worried about that other connection. And they're worried about that connection coming out and disrupting the stability of the connection with you. And they're stuck in their head, grinding on it in circles. Same same overall message there. When I clarify this Five of Cups, I got a lot of extra clarifiers. I got Three of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles, Nine of Cups, the Chariot, Five of Pentacles. Man, a lot of Pentacles here. Yeah, I got one cup. Okay, so far in this person's energy, I've got a total of three cups. One is about them being emotionally not fully mature and developed. One's about them being sad and remorseful constantly. And one's about their own personal happiness and wish fulfillment being the most important thing to them. And them not being happy with what they have. But this is teamwork and collaboration and working together as equals. It's Capricorn energy. We saw that here four cards deep in the overall energy. There's this idea of being single physically. Or at least presenting myself as if I am single and the idea of someone else is building all of the us stuff together. There is definitely an us for them with you. And they have sadness and remorse about something tied to this idea of building together with you. And there's something that they're not talking to you about related to building something together. And I think the thing is, like the reason you're working on things by yourself is because they're off also by themselves working on something that they want and they could even be doing teamwork and collaboration and laying the foundations of building a life together with someone that isn't you I have six of pentacles next this is sometimes a card of balance like equal give and take based on everything literally everything i've seen there does not seem to be any equal give and take with the two of you it's almost like you're pouring everything of yourself into this and they're taking everything you pour in right on out for themselves. This would be like when you two people contributing to the same bank account and you're dumping in your whole paycheck every week. And meanwhile, I'm not putting anything in. I'm just withdrawing everything you deposit. That's feeling like what's happening here. So this ain't equal give and take. The other meaning to this is the merchant, meaning this person is giving to two people in the physical sense. And notice one's behind his back. That's why there's a tower right beside that. That's what's bringing everything down. Nine of Cups is next. This is Pisces energy of personal happiness and personal wish fulfillment. This is a step backwards from this Ten of Cups that you believe you had with this person. This is not being combined together and pouring everything into each other equally and being fully happy and fully in love with each other. This is me loving myself. This is my own personal happiness. My own personal wish fulfillment is more important than yours. 
This is what I want matters more than what you want. What I want matters more than what's best for us. And that is also coming from a place of emotional immaturity. That, <laughs> this is sometimes a very self-serving, smug kind of an energy. Next, I have the chariot, which we've already seen in your energy over here. Fastest energy in the deck. And here's what I meant about the, the misalignment issue here. There's no reins connecting the driver to the beast that pull this. And there's the dark side, the shadow side. That is definitely present in this person, like full-blown present in this person, or the devil wouldn't be here. And there's the light side. And if the driver is not in full alignment, in other words, if both pieces of your person aren't pulling in the same direction, this isn't going to go anywhere with the two of you. It's good. You guys are going to tear apart as you move forward. They want one thing based on their desires and these urges that they can't control based on their shadow. And you want something else based on what you believe this to be. This is also, like I said, fastest energy in the deck. And sometimes this is just as simple as, you know, very, very fast. I birthed something new with someone else that wasn't you. That's how I'm giving to two. And I did that based on my own personal happiness and what I want. This could just as easily mean I'm getting the hell in this chariot and I'm getting the hell out of Dodge and I'm, I'm ghosting you and good day, ma'am, I'm out. See you. Especially when it's followed up by the Five of Pentacles. Taurus energy. Again, fives are conflict. Fives are change. This is an abandonment. This is being abandoned, being cast aside, being left out in the cold, walked away from, discarded. This is a breakup energy. And it's happening very fast. And see, like, look, this goes from being stuck and not moving at all to, like, warp speed. Like, right next step. We're going from dead stop to full acceleration. Final card for your person, Virgo. We got the Hierophant and the Devil. The Hierophant, we've already talked about that. It's the major arcana for Taurus. This is commitment, being fully committed to the relationship. This can be a marriage card. They have toxicity tied to this commitment. There is definitely toxicity in this commitment. There's a burden tied to the Hierophant on your side. That's the burden. This is the thing that's weighing it down. This is a toxic connection. This person has toxicity. I can promise you this is not the Ten of Cups. We did see the lovers at some point in the underlying energy. And I know there are a lot of readers that will delude the shit out of you and lie to you. Whether they're doing it on purpose or they just don't know any better and they're accidentally keeping people stuck in relationships they shouldn't be in. But those readers will tell you that the lover's card means twin flames. Twin flames has absolutely nothing to do with the tarot. This tarot deck, the Rider Waite deck, was invented in 1908. 1909 was the first time it was available. Twin flames weren't a concept that people even had heard of until the 1970s. Like 60 some years after tarot was made. this There is no such thing as twin flames. It's not real. The entire concept was invented by a lady who was a cult leader. You can totally look it up. It's freely available on the internet. She was a cult leader. And she got in trouble with the feds for illegally smuggling ammunition. And illegally altering fully automatic weapons and she built the largest underground bomb shelter and she started writing books about twin flames to get people to come to her congregation and join her cult and then she swindled all of them out of all of their money so the whole thing is a scam and i know a lot of readers believe in it and a lot of readers will tell you that th this kind of shit means they're your twin flame that's why they run away from you and that's why you chase them and no that ain't got nothing to do with nothing it's all bullshit and I promise you, this ain't twin flames, this ain't true love, this ain't happily ever after. This is a fucking illusion with this person. And your belief in that stuff, if you have that belief, is keeping you trapped in a very painful, very toxic relationship that was meant strictly to teach you a lesson through the pain it caused you. And instead of learning it, it's being repeated again. That's why I get so 
frustrated with this twin flame shit and why if you listen to me for long enough you're going to hear me go the hell off about that twin flame shit because there are definitely some people out there that are proponents of this twin flame that propagate this bullshit to everybody out of pure unadulterated greed i have access to look up all of the stuff that people type into youtube and find out what's the most popular search stuff that's going to get you the most views and make you the most money and believe me twin flames is way up at the top of that list but i still won't do it because it's all lies it's all bullshit and all it does is keep people stuck by putting this false belief in their head like seriously do you really believe that you're only half of a divine being? You're only half of a soul and the other half of you resides in some other douchebag and you got to put up with all their bullshit just to be whole? Come on, dude. Come on. That's what it feels like is happening here. Like I get so many twin flame comments. Please save those because I'm just going to tell you again, it's bullshit. It's my job to get you the truth, not Play along with your idealized viewpoint of how you wish things were because how you wish they are and how they actually are do not match. This person is really, ooh, I'm, I feel like I'm sweating. Nine of Pentacles on the bottom. The Virgo energy, single energy, it's a step back from us being combined together and living together and building a life together. This is me all by myself. I don't need you. I can do this on my own. This doesn't mean necessarily that they want to be single or even that they are single. It can just represent that they present themselves in the physical world as if they're single. They, they're in a commitment. Possible marriage. How could they be single? It's some toxic element. That devil energy is driving what they do. Knight of Pentacles. I know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm not going to do that. I know what I'm not supposed to do, and I'm going to do it anyway. The star. Wow. Normally, this is hope and healing, and, you know, this is the, the card that comes after the tower, though, so you don't make it here without going through the tower. This is supposed to be, like, when everything's changed now, and it's all come crashed down, and I, I don't know what to do moving forward. This is the guiding light that lights the way, so you can see your path forward. It's where hope comes from. It's also the thing that's in the hermit's lantern. That's the guiding light from the universe. He shines down inside of himself to look through his own shadow. But this is really feeling like I know what I'm not supposed to do, but I'm doing it anyway because this person has so much hope that we can heal it that they'll just take me back anyway. So this is basically like I can do whatever I want. And if it doesn't work out the way I'd like to see it work out, I can always come back to you. You know, all I got to do is present you the opportunity and talk to you about it. But this is also them having an early stage, not fully developed plan for their future to get what they hope for. When I clarify this Hierophant and the Devil, I get the Eight of Wands again, the Six of Swords, and the King of Wands. Wow. Eight of Wands is out here in the shared energy. This is the very fast forward movement towards something they have passion and desire for, which is birthing something new. Six of Swords, Aquarius energy. We've seen the Five of Swords. It's right here as the first clarifier in the shared energy, the mentally and psychologically painful situation or event. The betrayal. This is... The next step, this is, that painful thing has already happened at this point. And here, this is about moving away from the painful thing. It's about leaving something behind, leaving it in the past, and moving forward away from it toward the thing that they want. The, the, there is an implied choice that goes with this card, and your person isn't doing that right either. The implied choice is like, the pain has already happened. It's in the past. I can't change that. Only thing I have control of is the future. So the choice is about when I move forward into my future, do I carry the burdens that that painful thing caused for me? Do I carry the burdens of that into my future with me so it keeps weighing me down? Or do I carry forward the lesson that painful thing taught me so something like that doesn't happen again? They're not doing that. They're carrying the devil energy forward with them again. Like, they're totally not learning their lesson. 
what they're moving away from is you. What they're moving forward toward is the King of Wands. We've already seen the Queen of Wands in the underlying energy over here. I remember having the Sun, and the very next card was the Queen of Wands. Like her getting exposed, her getting illuminated, the light being shined on her, and now you know she's there. This is the counterpart to that. This is the passion, desire end of things here. This is very driven, motivated, determined, ambitious. This is like, I'm going to find a way to get what I want, or I'm going to make a way to get what I want kind of ambition here. But it's also the pinnacle of the wand suit. The wand is the phallic symbol of the tarot deck. It represents the male you-know-what and using that to be intimate. Sexual energy, sex, things of that nature. This is the pinnacle of that suit. So it's not just a driven, motivated, determined person. It's someone who's also very driven by sexual desire, sexual energy, passion, stuff like that. That's like the way it's laying on the table. That's what he's facing. He's facing his own personal happiness and wish fulfillment being tied to that wand type of an energy and how immature that actually is. He's stuck in that. And his way of moving forward is not to learn the lesson of getting his wand under control. When, when the king of wands is in the same area as the devil, same column, that's like probably sex addiction. At the very least, it's someone who has way, way, way too much importance placed on the wand and sexual activity. Ah, got options and choices, and they're being ruthless and cold and calculated in doing what they do. Now, if you still have questions you want answered about this situation or your relationship, click on any of the videos that just appear on your screen right now. When you do, you'll be taken to more Virgo love readings that can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And I'll see you in the next video.